There are so many exciting new sites and museums to see here in Rome, and on today's video, I'm gonna share the best of them with you. In a city like Rome, with literally hundreds of things to see and do, on your first visit, you're likely to focus on the biggies like the Colosseum, the Vatican, the Pantheon, etc. Whether you have more than a few days to spend here, or you have an interest in things that are a little bit off the beaten path, or it's not your first time here, you won't want to miss some of the sites and museums that have opened in Rome recently, some just this year. In this video, I'm going to share the newest sites and museums that have opened in Rome recently, and how you can fit them in to your itinerary. By the way, if you're not sure how to plan your itinerary, we have pages on the RomeWise website for one, three, and seven day visits. We also have eBooks for every month that includes a three day itinerary that's perfect for that month. Stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you a rarity, a new site you can visit at the Vatican. Let's start with the sites that are in or near the Colosseum, Roman Forum, and Palatine Hill Archeological Park. One of the hottest new sites in Rome is undoubtedly the Forma Urbis and its adjacent archaeological park. The site is made up of two things you can visit, the park itself, which is free and open daily, and the Forma Urbis, a museum that showcases a meticulously reconstructed map of the city as it stood in antiquity. We call this marble map of Rome the Severan map, named for the emperor who had it made, Septimius Severus. The map shows an incredibly accurate layout of Imperial Rome at a scale of 1 to 240. It once hung high on a wall in ancient Rome, but today it's embedded in the floor of this museum. And you can walk around and find yourself immersed in ancient Roman streets, monuments, and gardens. The adjacent archaeological park boasts a treasure trove of Roman fragments, including architectural elements, funerary monuments, reconstructed Republican-era tombs, and so much more. This site is just a stone's throw from the Arch of Constantine and the entrance to the Palatine Hill on Via di San Gregorio, so it's really easy to include in your visit to ancient Rome. Many people are familiar with the Palatine Museum on the Palatine Hill. It's only accessible with the Roman Forum Superpass or a full experience ticket. But I find many people are not aware of the new museum that recently opened in the Roman Forum. This museum is open to everybody who has a standard Colosseum or Roman Forum ticket. The Roman Forum Museum is just next to the Arch of Titus, and it's a treasure trove of ancient wonders curated by the esteemed archaeologist Giacomo Boni. Giacomo Boni is the archaeologist who famously excavated the Roman Forum in the early 1900s. Here you will find so many of the artifacts that were excavated by Boni and his assistants. I think they've done an incredible job of curating this museum and showcasing some of the artifacts as they were in situ. One of my favorite things about this little museum is the film that they show where you can get a sense of the history of the excavations of the Roman Forum. As a bonus, when you walk through the museum, you wind up in the Temple of Venus in Roma, and if you go through to the outside, you'll be treated to one of the best views of the Colosseum. Bonus tip, this is the cleanest bathroom in the Roman Forum and my number one bathroom stop when I visit here. When you're in the Roman Forum and you look up and you see all these people standing high on the Palatine Hill, they are standing on substructures of what was once an imperial palace, the Domus Tiberiana. The Domus Tiberiana recently opened to visitors after a long restoration, and it's fantastic. Even just walking through these substructures, you get a sense of the enormity of the palaces these emperors built for themselves. And if you look really carefully, you'll see some exquisite art. And if you get the Roman Forum Super Pass or the Full Experience Ticket, you can also visit the exhibition rooms. I highly recommend this to see some of the extraordinary artifacts you'll find inside. In case you didn't know, if you only have a regular Colosseum Roman Forum standard entry ticket, you can upgrade to a Super Pass for only four euros. You can do this at the ticket booths at the Colosseum and the Roman Forum. You can also do it online. The Colosseum recently added a new full experience ticket called the Attico. The Attico is the attic. And with this ticket, you get to take a glass elevator up to the level between the second and third rings. From there, you can climb to the third ring, but that's not all. If you're okay with a steep stair climb, you can also visit the fourth and fifth rings for stunning bird's eye views of the Colosseum. Mm -hmm. 
don't forget your full experience ticket also allows you a one-time entry to the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill and the super sites inside. As a bonus, once you're inside the Colosseum, you can head to the ticket booths there and ask if they have availability for the arena floor. So far, everyone who's tried this has told me that they've been allowed to access the arena floor at no additional charge. I'm not sure if this would work in the reverse that if you booked an arena floor ticket that you could then try to get a ticket to the Attico, but you could always ask. Here's a site I find most people have no idea even exists, but if you have any interest in ancient Rome, I highly recommend it. In 2014, they were converting an old bank into a condo, and as happens often in Rome, they came across some ruins. The excavations brought archaeologists down to levels more than 2,000 years old. They found evidence of domuses dating several centuries, one on top of the other. They organized the findings in such a way that they tell a story with multimedia and light shows. The story is beautifully narrated in Italian by Piero Angela. Visits are also available in English as well as other languages if you ask in advance. The visits are currently only available on Saturdays and only in Italian, but I assure you it's still worth the visit. It's quick and something you can easily do if you're visiting the nearby Aventine Hill or Circus Maximus. While infamous as the site of Julius Caesar's assassination, Largo di Torre Argentina, also known as Largo Argentina, is also home to four Republican-era temples and the site of Rome's most famous cat sanctuary. Financed by Rome-based Bulgari Jewelry House, the site is now wonderfully easy to visit. You can get up close to these temples and see them from ground level. Don't miss the opportunity to visit the small but well-curated museum on site offering further insights into this fascinating corner of ancient Rome. And of course, you can check out my video for lots more details. The Orti Lamiani may be one of the least new sites that I'm sharing with you on today's video, but it bears mentioning because it's still a relatively new museum and I find that most visitors have never heard of it. This site is visitable just off of Piazza Vittorio, so it's in the Esquiline neighborhood, not far from Termini train station. It's a really wonderfully curated site, and even though it's a little bit underground, it is absolutely not claustrophobic. Here you can find remnants of imperial gardens that were once frequented by the likes of Caligula and Nero. The Colossus of Constantine is not exactly a museum, but it is something you can easily visit when you're visiting the nearby Capitoline Museums or just visiting Capitoline Hill. I have a whole video all about the restoration, which you can watch for more details. I think this is a fascinating thing to visit if you love ancient Rome. It's also just impressive. It is at a one-to-one -one scale as it must have stood in ancient Rome. This colossal statue of Constantine is of course a replica. You can see the fragments upon which this replica was based inside the courtyard of the Capitoline Museums. The site is free to visit, so you can include it to a visit to the Capitoline Museums, Capitoline Hill, or the nearby Jewish ghetto. Moving away from this area of ancient Rome, I've got more new sites and museums to share with you. I used to love visiting this quirky little house museum of collector Mario Praz. His collection spans the 19th and 20th centuries. While the museum is free to visit, you do need to book in advance. The booking system happens to be the same one you use to book the Pantheon. Most Romans and fans of ancient Rome that I know are waiting impatiently for the day when the Museo della Civiltà Romana reopens to the public. If all goes well, that should happen sometime in 2025. In the meantime, there are other museums in the area worth visiting. In fact, in 2022, some of these museums merged to become the Museo delle Civiltà. The Museo delle Civiltà means Museums of Civilization. It's a wonderful space combining the best of the ethnological museum with artifacts and cultures from around the world, and the Museo dell'Alto Medioevo, which means the Museum of the Late Ancient Period that merges into the Early Middle Ages. In my opinion, it is worth visiting this museum just to see this one section, in particular, this one room that showcases an astonishing opus sectile from an opulent 4th century domus from 
Ostia Antica. This museum complex is in Eor, but it's easy to get here on the Blue Line Metro. Believe it or not, I have not actually covered every single new site and museum that has opened in Rome in the past year or so. These are just some of the highlights. The last site I want to share with you is a new site you can visit at the Vatican. This site is neither in the Vatican Museums nor in St. Peter's Basilica. It's called the Vatican Necropolis at the Via Triumphalis. This is an amazing archaeological site you can easily visit. You can see tombs from the imperial era going through several centuries. It's an easy, non-claustrophobic visit and you can take photos and video if you wish. It's literally between the Vatican Museums and St. Peter's Basilica and you could include it with your other visits there. At this time, they're only offering this visit a few times on weekends and you do have to book in advance, but I highly recommend it. What did you guys think? Did you enjoy this list of new sites and museums in Rome? Are you going to add any to your list? Drop me a line in the comments below. For lots more videos about ancient Rome, check out my playlist right here.